Hi, my name is Ann Tilly. I'm here in the textile room at the Forge Makerspace with two other textile sewing mentors like myself, Grace McFetters and Jennifer Jeanette. <laughs> and today we're gonna lead you through how the Binder Plus Conso Industrial Single Needle Machine works. Technically, it is not a binding machine anymore, so this is not accurate, but we end up calling it the binder because it says it right there. It's just a standard single needle machine. So what this machine does is it goes forward and it goes backwards. You can change the stitch length and that's about it. It does that thing really, really well and it can go through, I would say up to a heavy denim weight fabric very smoothly. So it's definitely gonna give you more heavier weight options for sewing compared to your home sewing machine. So today we're gonna start with, let's turn the machine on. If you look down under the machine here to the right, there is the power button on the side here. You'll switch that on. The main functions that you have here is you have an option to always set your needle up or always set your needle down after you take your foot off of the pedal. So right now it's at needle up. If I push it again, it's at needle down. And so you can play with that and decide which one you like better. If you're doing a lot of pivoting, needle down might be your choice. You also have an option of speed control here. So two, 300, that's pretty slow, but you can get very, very fast. So depending on your comfort level, that's what you have here. S, don't worry about pushing S. It, it has some weird functions and you can actually find more information about all the weird functions here, but there's things like you can have the motor run backwards, which you don't ever, ever want to do on a sewing machine. So just don't push that S button, you don't need it. But you please feel free to play with these buttons. First thing we need to do is get thread on our bobbin. There are a few bobbins already here that are wound and you are welcome to use any pre-wound bobbins, but I'm gonna show you how to wind a bobbin from scratch. First, you're gonna take your bobbin and place it on this bobbin holder here to the right of the machine. To tell the machine that you wanna start winding a bobbin, you're gonna push this forward to engage it. All it's doing is it's pushing this wheel to touch um, this belt so that it'll start spinning. It's a very manual function. We use cones for these types of machines. We want the thread to go straight up. So we're gonna start with a cone. We're gonna thread backwards to front through this little take up guide here. And then you're gonna come through this hole here. And this is the tension disc for winding the bobbin right here and the thread's gonna come around and make sure it's in the tension disc so if I hold both sides and pull forward, I know that it's in there. If it feels so prohibitively tight, you can adjust the spring to make it looser or tighter. You probably won't need to fiddle with it much, but what it's doing is it's just giving you higher pressure or lower pressure on the tension disc. So once you've got it in there, you can just take your tail and wrap it a few times through the empty bobbin and start pushing the foot pedal. I also like to make sure that my presser foot is up while we're running the machine doing this. So to make sure that your presser foot is up, um, there's a lever in the back to lift that up and now I can start running the bobbin. Does it matter how you wind the bobbin onto the thread onto the bobbin, like which direction? It's only gonna go this one way so if you start it backwards, it'll, it, unravel. it'll unravel itself. And then you'll be like, oh, I need to do it the other way. So you kind of bring it forward under. Under and, and over. over. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing we need to do to make the needle not go when you're winding the bobbin? No, the, bo the, the needle's just going to run as you wind a bobbin. You just want to make sure that you don't have thread in the needle and the presser foot is up. And you don't have to fill this all the way up. The machine will pop itself back once it gets full. But if you know that you're not sewing a lot, you can just do a little bit. So I'm just going to do about right there. And then I pop the bobbin uh, holder back and cut my thread. Whoops. And I can pull it off. 
the really cool thing about this machine is that we do have two cone holders here. And so I can actually just leave this thread here and I can wind a bobbin and still have my main machine threaded. Or even cooler is I can thread my machine and be running my machine and have a bobbin winding at the same time, which is a pretty cool function. Um, but if I only had one cone, I could always just take this and move it over to the other side. So let's get this on. So now we're going to thread the body of the machine. Again, we'll go through the cone take up guide here. And we've got some guides here. So first thing we'll do, and you can see that there is a reminder guide here to help you in case you forget the exact orientation. So especially for these little holes and, and stuff to help you remember what the best way to do that is. So it looks like we're going to go down and up through this first hole and loop around and down and up into the second hole. So we've got a little bit of an S here. You see that through here? And then this is a little tension disc, so we're going to make sure we get in that tension disc. And then we have a thread guide here. So basically, these thread guides are just helping make sure the thread stays in this tension disc. And actually, there's not even really much tension on that disc. OK, again, we've got more thread guides here where we're going to go up and down through this hole, and then up and down through this second hole. OK, so now we've got it through this thread guide here. And we're going to go down into the tension disc that serves for the needle thread. And this is an important little guy here. And actually, let me turn this light on. Does that help? It does. OK, we've got this nice separate light you can put on for the machine. So you want to make sure that your thread's in that spring. And you go in the spring, and then you, you use this little guide. And what that's doing is just that, str that spring is just helping your thread stay taut. So you want to make sure that you're using that spring. So then from here, we're going to use another um, thread guide. And we're going to go through this take up arm here. So I just turned the machine to make sure the take up arm is at the top. Then another thread guide here. One more thread guide, and then you're ready to thread the needle. I'm going to put the presser foot down so that I have a little bit more hand room to get in to thread the needle. And for this machine, you thread the needle from left to right. And a good way to remember that you thread the needle left to right is also that the bobbin and bobbin case get inserted in this direction, too. So like a typical home sewing machine, the bobbin's in the front, so you thread the needle from the front. But with this machine, the bobbin is on the left side, so you thread the needle on the left side because they work together, right? That's a good way to remember it. Jennifer's mind is blown. I can see it in her eyes, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way to remember why you do something, yes. right? <clears throat> okay, so now we're going to... never thread it from the right. Are there any machines that would ever be threaded from the right? I mean, I guess the if there was a... The, right. the arm. The arm's always on the right, so there's probably no machine that you thread right to left. So... But the orientation of the bobbin... Yeah, that's your clue. Yeah. <laughs> Blowing minds. So um, some home machines have like a bobbin case already set up in the machine and you just drop the bobbin in. Some mach home machines have the bobbin case. This machine has a bobbin case. Um, there is a specific way that the thread should be going when you drop your bobbin into the bobbin case. If you do do it the wrong way, it's not like the machine's going to blow up. It's just there is an advisable way to do it. And the way that I think about it is that you want, you basically, just like with the needle thread and the bobbin winding, everything has a tension disc. And that's just making sure that your thread stays taut as it's going through the machine. If you don't have any tension, you're just going to have squirrel's nest, right? So this, uh, the bobbin case is the same. So it has a tension disc right here. There's adjustability through this tiny little screw head 
Um, you probably don't need to worry about that, but um, I usually just use the tip of my fingernail, but we do have some small screwdrivers in the top drawer over there. Um, the, what they always say when you uh, put a bobbin in is you want it to drop like a spider. So this one is like, when I shake it, it kind of drops a little bit. You want, so that means basically you want it to be Goldilocks, like not too tight, not too loose. And you can adjust the looseness and tightness with that little screw right there. If you feel uncomfortable with doing this, just don't touch it for now. But you know, that's like maybe sewing 2.0 when you get into that. Um, the way that I remember which way that you want the thread to go in is you want the thread to kind of go back on itself when it goes into the tension disc. So um, like if you see here, my thread's coming up and over like that. And so then when I put it into the groove to put it in the tension disc, now the thread's going back on itself. Mm -hmm. So it's coming up and over and then back through the tension disc. Mm -hmm. And let me just show that again of how to put the thread in the tension disc is I like to put my thumb on the, on the bobbin so that it's not sliding on me. And then I make sure that my thread goes into that little groove and then comes in here and you're gonna hear a pop like that. And that lets you know that you've caught it in there, okay? So now that we've got the bobbin loaded in the bobbin case, we need to load the bobbin case. And this is a little tricky for this machine because they don't make it easy for you to see it, but I can show you a couple ways that we're gonna be able to see what we're doing. So one thing that you can do is you can actually push this machine. It's got two um, hinges here and you can push back to see where the bobbin case is gonna. <laughs> you, did, you, did you forget about this? I get on my knees. If you want, you can get on your knees and get under here. Um, but this is a way for you to see where we're going with the bobbin case and the bobbin. The bobbin case has one opening and that's gonna go upright to meet the needle because that's where the needle is gonna come down to catch your threads. And so think about that as facing up and you're just gonna push it in and you're gonna hear it snap. It has this little hand here to help you pull it in and out. I usually only use this to help me pull it out of the machine. It also helps make sure that the bobbin doesn't fall out. Um, I tend to not use the, the hand when I'm putting it in. I just put it in and let it snap. And then I use it to help me pull out, okay? Um, once you get more comfortable with the machine, you don't have to lift up the machine and you can instead just reach your hand underneath and insert the bobbin case as you get more comfortable. You can also see here that this is a self-oiling machine. Y'all know I wanna say oil, but I'm gonna say oiling. And so this is the reservoir and you see these wicks here. As the machine runs, these wicks absorb oil and it runs through the machine, keeping it lubricated. So the most important things with taking care of a machine is like keeping the lint off the machine and keeping it lubricated. And those wicks absorb what? These wicks absorb the oil from the chamber here. She got you. Are you picking on me? She's picking on me. She got you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I just feels more comfortable. Okay, so now we're gonna snap, we're gonna snap this in. And the last thing that we need to do to um, finish threading the machine is see how this bobbin thread is just hanging out underneath the machine. We need to bring it up to meet the needle thread. So I'm gonna put this back down. Okay, last step is we want to bring that bobbin thread up to meet our needle thread. So the way that I do that is I hold on to my needle thread. Oh my God. Annie! We've got a little Sorry. helper in here. <laughs> she pushed the pedal. Oh, she did. Yes. Like, Why are you doing that? She again? pushed the pedal. Like, okay. Not done that way. Hey, good. This is a good lesson though, is that you don't you don't want to run the machine with any thread in it because it'll just create a knot, like Annie just uh, explained us. So I'm gonna have to pull this back out and sorry. get that. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wrong. <laughs>
She it was just funny because I had no idea where it was coming from. I was like, what? I'm going to hold on to just the needle thread. I'm not holding on to the bobbin thread. And I'm going to use the needle and the needle thread to help me catch the bobbin thread and bring it up um, to our work surface. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use the flywheel here on the right side of the machine. And there's one way that you want to turn this. Um, and the arrows are indicating which way that is. Um, you don't want to turn it the other way because you're running the machine backwards. And typically, machines don't like being run backwards. So what we're going to do is this can manually control what the foot pedal does quickly. We can make, control it slowly with the, with the flywheel. So I'm going to turn the flywheel to where the needle comes all the way down and comes all the way back up again. And once the needle's up and once this take up arm is up, that's one full stitch, one full revolution. And once we've come all the way down and up again, you should see the bobbin thread ha has come up with the needle thread. And probably some hairs because Annie stepped on the machine, but Sorry. there we go. We're good. <laughs> so now that I have both of my threads meeting each other, I can lift the presser foot and put it under the presser foot and behind. Show how to lift the presser foot. Yeah. So then another cool feature of an industrial machine is they give you a knee lift option so that you can have both hands free while you're working. So um, that might take a little getting used to, but it's a really convenient tool. And then as well, you have a manual um, way to lift the presser foot in the back here, like the way a standard machine would work. Um, OK, so the machine is threaded. We're ready to start sewing. The only other things really to make note of for this machine is this knob here tells you how it controls the stitch length, OK? So you have to visualize that kind of your guide is like straight up and down. So like this would be one, and this would be five. So five is the longest, and less than one is the shortest. So again, Goldilocks rule, put it somewhere in the middle, not too short, not too long. And then this is how you go backwards on the machine. And the machine will only go stitch backwards as you have this lever down. So for example, I'm going to lift up the presser foot, put the fabric under the machine, and start sewing. Then if I, and you see here, I've got the needle down function happening right now. So every time I stop, the needle always ends up in the down position. So this is great for if you're doing a lot of like maneuvering, because the needle is just always down for you. Um, consequently, if you don't like the needle down, you know, switch to the needle up. And see here, it ends up on the up position. Um, and actually, this that's what this is right here. This is controlling that needle up and needle down. So this might be in your way a little bit as you're trying to use the flywheel, but just ignore it and just let it live the way it wants to live. And then in terms of doing a back stitch, you're just holding this down. And as long as you're holding it down, you're going backwards. So as soon as I lift it up, I'm going forward again. And you do not have to stop the machine to go backwards. Mm -mm. The other thing I need to point out, do you see this box right here to the left of the machine? Uh -huh. This is where extra needles are. And you can actually see this was the original binder that was on the binder plus machine that we took off and just made a normal machine. Oh my goodness. But yeah, we, so you can, we can play with this at some point. We could play with putting a binder on there. You just have to change the throat plate to match it. I've never done it, but we can figure it out. Um, so these are the needles I would recommend for when you change this machine. Um, you can see here these numbers. So the higher the number, the thicker the needle is. So 100 would be like if you were sewing heavyweight denim. 90 would be getting a little lighter. Um, these say 180. OK, these are monsters. You don't ever need to use these. That would be more for leather. These aren't or even, the these upholstery. don't, look at this. We got all these donations. Anyways, we probably need to get some more needles. But ideally, for like lightweight to medium weight stuff, you'd probably use a 70 or 80. So we'll get some more of those, and you'll find them in here. Nice. Should I demo changing a needle? No. <laughs> well, maybe. OK, so now I'm going to show you how to change a needle. Um, the first thing you're going to do, so let's pretend like 
the needle I have in here has broken. So I'll get my project out of the way. And then there's a very, you know, simple flathead screw right here. So I grabbed a, a screwdriver from our nice uh, drawer over there. And you're gonna unscrew enough for this to drop out, okay? So for industrial sewing machine needles, they're com the shaft is completely round. There's no flat area to help you guide it in to ensure that you have the needle in correctly. There's also a front and back to the needle. So the front of the needle has this front groove right here, and that's the part that's gonna be facing left. And then on the back, it has this thing called a scarf where the thread exits the needle. And again, there's a reference here on the um, wall if you have questions about that. So I want to make sure that the front groove area is facing left. So I like to put like a straight pin in like this, and then that helps me kind of push it all the way up and make sure that it's angled correctly. Because if it's like this, then I know that the eye is not angled correctly. So I'm gonna use a combination, I guess, of my, my finger and the, the, the straight pin to help me hold this up while I screw it back in. So I know that it's angled right. I'm gonna use, I like to use my fingernail because I have it. Um, not everybody might have that. And then you wanna make sure that you're all the way as far up as you possibly can be um, in that groove and then you're going to tighten again. Um, one mistake that's easy to make is that your needle is not pushed up all the way and then it's not, it's skipping stitches because the timing's not right with, with the bobbin and bobbin case. Again, if you find that you are breaking a lot of needles regularly, you might want to reach out to one of the mentors here and see if there's an issue going on outside of just the needle itself. It might be a little user error. I'm, I'm not saying it, I'm just suggesting it, okay? Um, another good thing is that sometimes the needle can break if your threading is not correct. So an, um, just a good general rule of thumb is that if you are having issues, um, to just cut, take, take all the thread out, take the bobbin out, re-thread everything because there might be an issue here that you're not seeing. And so instead of sitting here finding your issue, you can just re-thread it. And a lot of times that fixes the problem. That's sort of like, you know, turning the computer off and on again. So that is it for the machine. Uh, just make sure that you clean up um, any threads or um, random uh, needles that you leave around. Broken needles should go in the sharps container. And then just make sure that you turn the machine off before you leave and that's it. And happy sewing, and hopefully I'll see you around the forge. Mwah.